Somebody already said it. Good morning, church. Good morning, great people of Memorial United Methodist Church. It is my privilege and honor to stand here today. My name is Watanak Hing. Once again, it is my privilege and honor to be your pastor. Friends who are worshiping with us online, I also very, very happy that you are with us, that you worship God with us wherever you are. Friends, whether you're here for the first time, you've been here so many times, let me give you a good welcome. Welcome to Memorial United Methodist Church, the greatest Methodist Church in the world! I'm so really thankful that you are here today as the family of faith coming together in one place to worship our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me express it again. We are here to worship our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We are so thankful for what he's done for us. We are so grateful for his forgiveness, his love, his mercy, and therefore we are here to give it all back to him, to give our time, our prayer, our praise, our talent, our treasure, everything. Because God deserves every single ounce that we have for him. And so, I pray that today you will be inspired through the scripture that we will read today. It's about being the salt and the light of the world. Are you ready to hear about this? Yeah. We're going we're gonna to have holy communion. I pray that you will focus on the communion liturgy that we will do together. It's going to be good. It center us into the love and the forgiveness of Christ. We're going to have great fellowship with one another, friends. When you leave, don't go just yet. Just hang around in the narthex, shake hands, talk to people. If you feel comfortable about shaking hands, if you feel comfortable about talking with one another, do that, you know. More importantly, friends, just want to remind you that on the 11th, next Saturday, this coming Saturday, our church will have our church cleaning up day. Everybody is invited, all right? We have a lot of tree branches to prune, so everybody is invited to come. Jim is tall enough, we will make him prune the bran uh, tree branches, how about that? Yeah? All right, if you can, please come. Um, what time do we start, uh, Kathy? Nine o'clock? Nine o'clock are English time. I know Mong will come at about six o'clock or seven o'clock. That's what they do. One time they told me, start at 9 o'clock. I come at 9, everybody finish, go home. I was like, oh, okay, that's fine. Well, anyway, just come, say, so we will have a lot of stuff to do together. Also, very important, very fun activity that will happen that will be on the 12th, next Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday. Jim, do you have anything to tell us? What are we planning to do on the Super Bowl Sunday? That's about $6,000. You better bake a lot of cake, okay? <laughs> to pay that off. That's good. Thank you. Well, friends, these are great things that is coming for us. Our church always have a lot of fun. Um, I pray that we will enjoy and uh, continue to enjoy and to, to, to be a part of, of each other. Without further ado, are you ready to worship? Yeah. All right, that's good. I feel your energy. I feel your enthusiasm. That's great. Let's be in the attitude of worship. I would like to invite our acolytes. The acolytes come down with the light of Christ. Representing the spirit of God is with us all. Representing that the Christ is with us all. He's going to nudge you today. He's going to speak to you today. You're going to be inspired today. So be ready. Open your heart. Open your mind. Open your door. You don't know what God has in store for you. It's going to be big, friends. You're going to leave this place feeling more energetic and go home, go to wherever you reside and make the world a better place. Making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Amen to that? Without further ado, I would like to invite our liturgist, Sonny, to come help us in time of worship. Sonny? Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Good morning. Welcome to United uh, Memorial Methodist Church. And uh, for our friends and worshipers online, welcome, welcome. Now, call to worship, and I'll be doing the, the leader part, and you'll be doing the people part in bold. 
God said, let there be light. And the light shone in the darkness. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. The opening hymn. Let's sing this little light of mine. light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now the, the scriptural lesson is taken from uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 through 20. Please remain standing if you are able. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. People do not light a lamp and put it under the bushel basket. Rather, they put it on the lampstand and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have come not to abolish it, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth passes, pass away, no one letter, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The word of God for the people of God. a child would you pray to show us the way like a child here to stay jesus comes like a child we receive all that love can conceive like a child we believe jesus to invite our children to come up. Please come on up, children, beloved children. Beautiful children of God, how is everybody doing today? Can you scoot up a little bit below, inshallah? 
and Emily and Lena, can you scoot up and down? Scoot down, close, close the gap. Come on, come on, close the gap. Come on, so the camera can see you. Come on, close the gap. Come on. All right. Let me ask you a question. What do I have here? What is this? A McDonald's bag, huh? What do you think is in the McDonald's bag? What do you think is a McDonald's bag? Huh? Food, but there's a Food, but there's a light in there? How do you see there's a light? Oh, because you can see the purple. All right, let me see what I have in here. Ooh, a magician? Pull out a, a McChicken or something? How about that? Huh? Ding, ding, ding. Oh, there's a light. How do you know there's a light, huh? You take it and go to the office. Oh, I took it from my office. <laughs> I was trying to hide it, but I thought it's going to hide, but it does not hide. Well, look, look. The, the light is beautiful, don't you think? Look at this. It changed color. What do you think light do to you? What do you think light do to you? Yeah? Yeah? What? Do you think you can see without light? No. Do you think people can see if we turn off all the light? No, huh? Light help us see. But how good is the light if I put this light, this beautiful light, in a basket like this? You know, cover it up like this. I thought it was a little, you know, thicker. Do you see the, do you see the light now? You don't see the light, right? So the light, if it is going to be in the basket, is not going to be good. The light should be outside so everybody can see. The Bible today tells us about, Jesus tells us to be the light of the world. Jesus tells us to go and make the world a better place. A brighter face, place. That speaks to all of us, friends. Wherever we go, we give people smile. We give people hope. We give people love. And that the world will see Jesus is in you all. That Jesus make you happy people. That Jesus allow you to be light of the world, right? Jesus also said, he is the light of the world. So we can tell the world, tell your friends, your uncles, your parents, your relatives, anybody around you about the light of Jesus. Help them to see the light. Help them to be happier. Help them to be encouraged. Help them to be hopeful. Right? Because now when you go to school, you will see a lot of friends around you. Some of them might be sad. Right? For some reason. How about we as good Christians go to them and give them a word of encouragement. Talk to them. Be friend to them, right? That make them have a good day, okay? And if you can, invite them to come to church. On Sunday, we are here together. We learn together. We're in one place together, and then we play together. Amen to that? All right, thank you. Friends, let us pray for our children as they are going to go out and be the light of Christ. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we love you. Thank you for making us the light. Thank you for sending us out to be light to the world. Help us, Lord, to always be close to you. I ask that you also bless all the children so that they can grow in your love, grow under your guidance, and they will become the people you want them to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give them a big round of applause. Yeah. How is everybody doing today? Good. I like this light. All right, let me start with something funny. How about that? Are you ready? Okay, this is about a young evangelist. He just got hired to work in the church. Okay, so he got up, and then uh, he came to, um, to, uh, to a church meeting. And then during the church meeting, uh, before the church meeting start, the gen one gentleman said, you know, I used a radar detector to avoid getting ticket for speeding. And that irritated the evangelist a lot, you know. How can you be a good Christian and trying to break the law, you know, something like that, right? But then another gentleman said, well, it's the man upstairs that you need to worry about. Oh, the evangelist was like, wow, that's good. And he was about to compliment, to give compliment to the second guy. 
before he could give a compliment to the second guy, the second guy said, the, 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 the second guy said, the guy in the helicopter will never forget you, will always get you every time. What would you do if you were the evangelist, you know? All right, friend. Breathe. Take a deep breath. Breathe deeply and slowly. Close your eyes. I invite you to be in the attitude of prayer. Wherever you are right now, sit comfortably. It is your time with God. You can pray. You can be in complete silence. I pray that God will speak to you now. Let me give you a couple minutes in time of silent prayer. Loving and merciful God, thank you so much for being God. Thank you for having called us to be here together. Lord, we are here together today to worship you. We bow our heads, we surrender our lives to you, and we ask that you will take it, take it. You will be in control. Lord, lead us, lead us in such a way that will transform each and every one of us so that we can be light to the world and go and give light to many people out there. Lord, as we are here today, we remember our friends and our loved ones. May your healing power be with all. May you go give comfort to those who need. Lord, may your love shine in us, through us, and to many others, Lord. As the world need hope, as the world need love, as the world need you. And as we are here together, May this act of worship be pleasing to you. And Lord, we ask that the word of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you. Because you are our rock and you are our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, today it's very interesting, right? Look at that. Looking toward Lent already? Christmas is just behind us. Christmas was just a couple months ago, and actually, last week, a few weeks ago, we're still celebrating Christmas. First Sunday, second Sunday of Christmas. Epiphany just behind us. And now, we are ready to welcome Lent season. Season before Easter. Ash Wednesday is going to happen on February the 22nd. It's only a few weeks ahead of us. And after Ash Wednesday, we will spend 40 days in time of preparation to prepare our spirit, to prepare our soul for the, the passion, for the story of Christ, for the Easter's time. Can you imagine? Easter is around the corner, April 9, coming up. Wow, time is flying, huh? You must be having a lot of good time that you don't really understand or you don't really notice that time is flying so fast. Our church must be doing a lot of good stuff, huh? Can I hear an amen for that? Yeah, we're doing a lot of good stuff, right? And now, look at this. This is the second month of the year. We were like having a lot of good time in 2022 and all of a sudden, 2023. And guess what? January is all gone behind us now. Let's think, let's think what God has been working through us so far. And now, this is the second month of 2023. And the scripture today calls us to be the light of the world. The scripture today reminds us that we have the responsibility. The responsibility to the world. We have to be light to the world. You know, light it's not here to shine for itself. 
but light is to shine for many other people around it. Light is for everyone to be able to see. Light is everyone is for everyone to see what they want to do, what they can do, and what they can have hope for. Huh? Are you called to be the light? Are you the light? You know, when I was in college, I was doing English as a second language. Philo and Shiloh, can you please be calm down, okay? Thank you. Pastor kids, right, in the house. So when, when I was in college, I was, I was doing teaching English as a second language. That was my major in college. And at that time, I had a time to tutor blind people. I taught them English. Can you imagine blind people who could not even read and write Cambodian language, but now they have to learn English. And I was their tutor. It was something fun, you know. They have everything memorized. They have to, I had to speak everything with my Cambodian accent. They will listen to their cassette tape. You know what cassette, ta cassette tape is, right, children? <laughs> All right. They, they had to listen to their cassette tape, and then they have to practice saying it, learning it, memorizing it when I'm not there. I never forget. They, were told me, they told me one time, Pat, uh, teacher, you are my light. You help me see. You help me understand something that I would never understand before. And then they told me about Louis Braille. Right? And they said, well, without this guy, the world would have been a lot darker. But this guy who was blind himself, he would try his best to bring his skill to help blind people in the world, all over the world, to be able to read. It's very sad that he could not even see his, his production. He died of TB, TB uh, tuberculosis, right before his brain system became worldwide, became well used by all the system around the world. My, my, my point here today is, are you the light of the world? Wherever you go, will you be able to shine light, shed light to other people? Right? Verse 16, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good work and give glory to your Father in heaven. You see that? We have Jesus that the world cannot find anywhere else. When the world needs hope, when the world needs forgiveness, when the world needs mercy, when the world needs Jesus, we are Christians, we are Christ followers, we have Jesus to offer to them. You know, sometimes we, we, we don't focus on our, on our mission. We, we, we don't want to give Christ to the world. We try to give entertainment, we try to give excitement, we try to give something that the world can actually do too. But I think we as Christians, our specialty is to give Jesus. Look, the book of John chapter 8 verse 12 says, I am the light of the world. We need to give Jesus to the world so the world will have light, the world will be able to see, the world will know where, what direction they need to take. Just like you. You understand it. You follow Jesus. You have Jesus as your light to guide your step. You know why the world needs Jesus so much? Because Jesus is so gentle. Jesus is so loving. Jesus is so caring. He forgives everything. He is the ultimate love. His love is unconditional to us. Jesus even say, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden. I will give you rest. Can you imagine that? Sometimes life is so hard for us, and we try, we strive, we fight, we go forward, we argue, we do everything, we try our best in order to conquer the world. And then we are tired, and then we are burned out, and then we are depressed, and then we need medication. But Jesus asked us to come to him. For you who are really and heavy laden, and he will give us rest. Rest that you can find in Jesus. It's very interesting how the world needs Jesus 
Because the world is looking for salvation. The world is looking for something that can give them security. The world is looking for hope. Remember the story of the, uh, of the, the paralyzed man who was laid down by his four friends in, 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 a, in a basket, right? In, in a bed while Jesus was preaching. And as they all come down, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. We are the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. We have the responsibility to bring Jesus to the world so that they will find rest in Jesus. They will find forgiveness in Jesus. Think about it, friends. The world's chaotic sometimes. Many times, or all the times. Some of you don't even want to turn on TV anymore because it's, it's wild out there. It's very depressing out there. It's very negative out there. So bring Jesus to the world. Because Jesus said in John chapter 10 verse 11, said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd give his life for the sheep. Come to Jesus. He will give you rest. Come to Jesus. He will forgive your sins. Come to Jesus. He will protect you. He will even give your life. His life to protect you. How great is that? And that's the result of why we all are here today. That on a very beautiful, sunny, shiny, cold day on Sunday, you decide to prioritize to come to this space to worship Him. Because He is so good to you. His mercy, His forgiveness, His love, His hope, His joy is so much upon you. And when you come to church, you feel like, wow, your love to Jesus is so meaningful. And you want to build that relationship with Jesus each and every day. Now, when you're enjoying the relationship with Jesus, why don't you bring Jesus to the world? To whoever it is. Your neighbor, your friends, your relatives. Because Jesus, Jesus is the good shepherd. He will give it. He will give life to the world. That story remind, remind me of, of, of Mother Teresa. There was, there was a conference, there was a meeting in North America here. And then a lot of nuns, a lot of people around the world come to meet Mother Teresa. But then one lady asked Mother Teresa, Mother, most orders have been declining in membership. But your order, your order is attracting thousands. What do you have to give to them? Why are they here? And you know what Mother Teresa said? I give them Jesus. The lady asked again, I know, I know. Your order is good, good Christian order. People are following Jesus. But what else do you give to people? To attract them by thousands to come to your order. Mother Teresa said, I give them Jesus. The lady persisted. She was like, I, I totally understand what you're saying. But can you be more specific? What do you mean when you say you give them Jesus? You know what Mother Teresa said? Jesus is all I give to them. I don't have anything else. I don't know how to explain to you, but that's all I give is Jesus. What would Jesus do? Right? So I encourage you to do the same. That you will give Jesus. Mother Teresa said, words which do not give the light of Christ increase the darkness. Remember that? How about your word? Your words is also the light of Christ. Your smile, your presence, your behavior, whatever you do, whatever you think, whatever you act, those should be the light of Christ that the world needs you to make this world a better place. Huh? When I think about this, I think about what we all are doing together. Let me, let me give you a little report. I just got the finance report, so I cannot, I cannot, 
I cannot stop but report to you what we have been doing together as disciples of Christ. Fund balance today is $430 for the year 2022. Is it good? It's good. We are in the black, friends. I mean, come on, that, that's good. And you still have $430 in the bank compared to last year. That is enough to pay the pastor to have a two-week vacation in Hawaii. How about that? <laughs> Isn't that cool? Oh, man, when I see that report, I was like, yes. Look at how we turn our ship. You know, we used to be way, way in the dark, way, way in the black, $50,000 a year or so. 2021, I got up, and we were in the red. We were like, we were like $783, something like that behind last year. And this year, look at our ship. We turned from the black, from the, from the red to, to being, to being in, the, in, in, in the red. Sorry. We turned from being in the red, now we're in the black. That's just amazing. Well, look, look at this. You will say, oh, come on, Pastor. You're, you're full of yourself. $430? That's not going to pay your vacation in Hawaii. Stop dreaming about that. But let me tell you this, we still have $430 after we pay full, 104% actually, apportionment, the money that we give, our, 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 our portion to help the United Methodist Church that we give to the annual conference. That is $25,000 per year, friends. We actually just hired in year 2022 a full-time associate pastor, Pastor Lee Chai over there. Full time. When, when, when have you ever thought about that? Come on. This is big. Where, 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 where do we get the money to pay him? I know he worked like slave, you know. We don't have to pay him. But sure, we pay him. You know what I'm saying? It's a full time. This is big. This is big. We have $430, but at the same time, we also this year hired a part time youth director. We hired a part-time youth director. This is how cool we are. You know, when we are thinking about turning our church, uh, 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 what do you call, uh, growing our church junk, we really think about, we put our time, our talent, our treasure, our resource together. This year, last year, 2022, we renovated our youth building. I mean, I've, how many times I talk about it? But it's, it's, it's my pride, it's our pride that we can do this together, you know? Look at the basketball court. It's, it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. Look at our youth coming together, you know. I called one of the moms, and, and mom said, Oh, my children just love Destiny, our youth director. Look, at, look, 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 we, look what we have been doing as we all trying to make disciples of Jesus Christ. I, I want you to see the, the third picture there, the, the, the one top on uh, the, the top right corner there. I just want to show you how many people are coming in our youth group. Look at our children that are working together. Look at the next picture. Our Hmong congregation is growing leaps and bounds. As we are growing, they are also growing. And what, what, what are you talking about when you're talking about making disciples of Jesus Christ? That is what making disciples of Jesus Christ. When last year there were only 20 people on Sunday worship service in Hmong service. When this year they had almost reached 100 people in Sunday worship service. That is making disciples of Jesus Christ. One person at a time. They need three more to kill a cow. You should laugh that too. This is the tradition. This is our, our, our goal. When we have in our Hmong service, when we have 100 people in our Hmong service, worship service, we will celebrate by going out and kill a cow and party. Just make lots and lots of food. Yeah, Sifuli Chai said, yeah, that's it, that's it. Three more people. They count one time as 97 people. On the Sunday service, I look around, I, wow, that's a lot of people. So I text Tang, Tang, who is the lay leader for our monk service, I said, please count how many people. Make sure we have 100. And they keep counting. Every single movement in the, in, in the church was counted, right? We got 97. They were like, mm, three more, three more, come on now, three more, right? Yeah, that's what we're doing. Talking about making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. We are here too. Look how many people are here today. Young and old, new and old, who are here worshiping Jesus together. Do we want more than this? Sure we do. Do we have a lot of uh, empty fuel? Sure we do. 
What are we doing? We are trying our best to serve, to be a part of the community. Last Thursday, we came together and had a two, three hour, two hour long meeting to, to look at our church calendar. It's like 25 pages long on our church calendar. Look at all the activities that we are doing. And why do we sit down to calendar our schedule, to schedule our calendar? Because we want to make sure whatever we do is to, is to help fulfill the mission of our church, to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. We want to do it better. We want to do it stronger. We want to know how to do it better. We want to advertise better. We want to reach out to more people. Everybody wants to do that. And what, do, what is my plea to you all? Please. Join us. Participate. Lend your hands. Lend your time. We need all your talents. We need all your love. Friends, when we say we give our money to our general church as an apportionment, we help making disciples of Jesus Christ literally around the world. One of the United Methodist General Agency is Global uh, General Board of Global Ministry. This is what General Board of Global Ministry do. Let's watch this video. The General Board of Global Ministries is the worldwide mission, relief, and development agency of the United Methodist Church, working with partners and churches in more than 125 countries to equip and transform people and places for God's mission. Global Ministries connects the church and mission through the sending of missionaries, evangelism and church revitalization, disaster response and recovery led by the United Methodist Committee on Relief and Global Health. God calls missionaries from communities everywhere in the world to serve in communities anywhere in the world. More than 300 missionaries serve today as evangelists, health professionals, educators, and agriculturalists. They strive to strengthen neighborhoods, working with others to transform poverty into opportunity, injustice into equality. Missionaries care deeply about people, following Christ's example of unconditional love, going wherever God leads. At the heart of the church and mission is God's persistent call to make disciples who follow Jesus Christ, finding creative ways to express God's love in every community. The work of evangelism includes the cultivation of faith communities and new leaders, supporting a new church in an old neighborhood or an old church that welcomes new neighbors. Revitalizing churches leads to deeper conversations about building relationships, seeking partners, and embracing mutuality in mission. The United Methodist Committee on Relief marks its 80th anniversary in 2020. Founded in response to the devastation caused by the Second World War, today UMCOR works to alleviate human suffering through ministries and partnerships addressing disaster response, global migration, sustainable development, and environmental care. At its core, UMCOR is a connection of people, volunteers, organizers, caseworkers, and counselors ready to serve all in need. Global Ministries responds to the world's need for mental, physical, and spiritual well-being through global health. Our health ministries reach vulnerable communities that have little access to medical help or other life-saving measures. More than 300 clinics and hospitals refurbished for service, a network of health professionals working together, medical supplies and equipment, medicine to treat diseases, and vaccines to prevent them from spreading are signs of global health at work. The church in mission is the church alive, fully open, reaching out in God's love, even when our buildings are closed during a pandemic. This mission, made possible by you, belongs to you and all United Methodists connected to God, to one another, and to the world. Together, we await the leading of the Spirit in ways not yet seen, trusting in God's purpose and God's word. Let's give them a big round of applause. In our United Methodist Church, there are 12 different general agencies. Uh, you know, the word 12, right? The number 12 is the disciples of Jesus, right? They, the, the council of bishops decided to, to make these 12 agencies that is working around the world to help us as disciples of Christ, making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation literally of the world. We have a part in it. Yes, we try to transform from here, from this community, from your family, from your friends. But at the same time, our connectional system that we are working together will go and reach literally to the world. 
the United Methodist Church is probably one of the most, one of the biggest organizations that send out missionaries to the world to make the world a better place. Cambodia is one of the countries that benefit quite a lot from the United Methodist Church. You should be proud of yourself. You come to your church, some, sometimes you're like, what are we doing? This is what we are doing together. You see that? You are called to be light of the world. Go and be the light of the world. Be ready for lunch. Join our adult Sunday school. They're talking about lunch already. What are they doing to, to, to strengthen the spiritual discipline? What should they give up? What should they take on? During lunch time, let us, let us pray. Let us fast. Let us give. Let us make this world a better place. Let us allow ourselves to be even closer connect, connected to our God, Jesus Christ. Amen to that? Amen. Let's give God a big round of applause. I think God is good. I think his mercy endures forever for all of us. I pray that each and every one of you here will find the love and the mercy and the purpose in Christ here in this place. We are in this together. We are working together. Friends, none of you, none of you is better than all of us. When we all do it together, we will move mountains. If you leave this place and you don't remember anything, please remember, I love you, Jesus loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Amen to that? How about we tell one another that, okay? One, two, three. I love you, Jesus loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Amen. Friends, we're here to worship our Lord Jesus Christ. Today is a special day that we come together to celebrate and we have Holy Communion and we join together to understand what it means when we partake in this Holy Communion. I pray that the liturgy will speak to you. In the United Methodist Church, everybody is invited to the Lord's table. You are welcome to participate in our Holy Communion. I invite you to join with me in the Communion Liturgy. And when you read it, please read it like you mean it. I pray that the liturgy will change you, will transform you, will make you love Jesus even more. Christ the Lord invite to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and before one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will and we have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turn away and your love fail, and our love fail, your love remains steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor.
to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave saying to you, broke the bread, gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You can open your first layer of your communion package, take the wafer and eat. Remember the body of Christ broken for you. Next slide, please. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to the disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in the remembrance of me. Now you can open the second layer and drink. Remember, the blood of Christ shed for you. And so in the remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. As we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit made us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. The uh, worship team is going to lead us in time in, in a song. I pray that you will be able to contemplate, think about the, uh, the scripture that we just read. Think about the liturgy that we just do. Let's, let's worship together through this song. Share. Yeah. 
pray that you enjoy the time of Holy Communion. I pray that the body and the blood of Christ is with you to convict you, to inspire you, to make you and to mold you so you leave this place to be light and salt for the world. Now I invite you to worship through time of tithes and offerings. I would like to say thank you to all that you've been doing to our church. The generos your generosity has helped us go through what we've done so far. Like the short report that I gave to you. I'm just, I, it, was, it was amazing. We could not have done all that without your help, without your love, without your support. You can give. We have a, a, an offering plate right next to the door. You can drop your check or your cash over there. Or you can give online. You can go to our United Methodist, uh, Memorial United Methodist Church on, uh, website. Or you can just aim your camera onto the QR code. It will lead you to a website that you can donate online. I invite friends who are worshiping with us to give as well. All that you do, help us to make disciples of Jesus for the transformation of the world. Let us now say the thanksgiving prayer with me. May these gifts of our bind, uh, bind up the brokenhearted and welcome others. May our offerings of time gifts and talents be uplifting and bring glory to your kingdom. Let us stand for a time of doxology. Praise God all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here. sing nothing but the blood as we go out and be the light for Christ in the world. together to clean the church. Amen to that? How many of you plan to come? And how about the cake birthday thing? Not not the birthday, but the, what do you call that? Super the Super Bowl Sunday, right? Are you going to come? Are going to join us? Right after service? Is it right after service? Around noon time in the fellowship hall, bring some cake, talk to Jim if you need to bake anything. We need just to raise $6,000. I hope we can do that. Oh, I don't know. Hey, anything is good, right? Friends, when you leave this place, may the Spirit of God be with you. Go 
the light of Christ does not stay here. The light of Christ will go with you because you are, you are the light of the world. You will bring Jesus to the world. The world is a better place because you go out and shine. The world will be so much brighter that no matter where people go, people can go all the way to the moon. They can still see us because you shine so bright. God is good. And all the time. Thank you so much, friend, for coming to worship with us today. May God bless you, and I will see you all next week. Thank you also, friends, who are worshiping with us online. May the Spirit of God be with you as we break from this worship time. Amen.